Okay, folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, and we're going to carry on with the Rubicon Vietnam uh, Huey diorama. Um, so, like I did with the NVA figures, uh, we've reviewed the figure set itself and see what we get in the box. So I'm going to show you how I paint them. Um, so this is one of those figures from the box, primed and missed the surface uh, uh, 1500 black, um, and we're ready to go. So the difference this time, as opposed to the MVA figures, is that we're actually going to be putting like block color down um, on the figure itself. Um, but this is how I do it. This is not a tutorial. This isn't by any way, shape or form how you should do it. This is just how I did it to achieve the end result that I was happy with uh, in, a, in a fairly simple way. I'm not really a figure painter, to be honest. Um, so I'll try and show it as best I can. So the first thing we're going to do, as always, is we're going to use Citadel Ultra and Grey. And we're just going to very lightly, it's not a Zenith or Highlight, it's essentially just to bring out all the little details so that we can see where they are. Um, and the way we're going to do that is just a very light sort of dry brush. It won't really make any difference because we're going to paint this in block colour. So it won't sort of make any difference to highlights or anything like that, really, because uh, it will be covered by the, the base coats and stuff. But it just allows us to see all the little details, which is what we're after. Um, it just kind of brings out all that detail. So there we go. It's as simple as that. There's no dark art to it at all. Um, so yeah, there we go. So as you can see, we're, we're there. Um, and that's just allowing me to see all the various bits and bobs, all his webbing pouches, straps and all that sort of stuff. So next thing we're going to do is we're just going to use a small layer brush from Citadel. It's one of their synthetic brushes. They're, they're okay for this sort of thing, for base coats and stuff. No issues at all. And the color we're going to use is, he says, if we can find it, is we're going to use Citadel Death World Forest. So, we're going to thin this. I'm not using a wet palette. I'm using a traditional sort of paint palette. I always cover them in foil, keeps them nice and clean. When you finish, you can just throw the foil away. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of water to this just to thin it down a touch because it, it is one of their base colours. Um, so it, it's quite thick. Um, so obviously what we, we don't want loads of thick paint because we're going to obscure all the lovely detail on the figure. So, the way we're going to do this is we're going to paint the entire uniform webbing in this colour. Um, and then we're going to start to differentiate and darken it down with some washes. So, I'll get his base colour on, let that dry. And then I'll come back once uh, we're good to start differentiating and separating out the greens. See you in a minute. Okay, so we have the green all over his helmet, all over his uniform, webbing, all the pouches, not on the uh, the bayonet blade there, all the webbing straps, etc., grenades, the whole the whole shebang. Um, and as you can see, it's very monotone. It's very boring at this stage. So what we're aiming for is something similar let's move that one out of the way so we can focus something similar to this so you can see there the differentiate is that even a word the difference between the color of the webbing and the uniform etc so we're going to achieve that in a really simple way okay so we get that one back the way we're going to do this is we're going to use uh, some washes essentially and some shades. So if we get this one 
which is the Army Painter Military Shader, which is a very dark green, almost an olive drab colour. Um, and this is very, very simple to do. So I'm just using a generic brush, uh, model painter detail brush. It's not really a detail brush at all, as you can see. It's a cheap, cheap, nasty brush. But for this sort of thing, you don't want to be using your best, your best Windsor and Newton or Artis Opus brushes to, to put an army painter wash on. So all we're going to do is over the uniform itself, and over the helmet is we're just going to apply this wash but we're trying to avoid any of the webbing any of the pouches and we just want it over the actual fatigues or uniform all right that's what i'm trying to do here if you make a mistake and you go over the webbing pouches then that's a really easy fix you wait for it to dry and just go back in with the uh, the base color and start again so it's a very quick process they're great these army paint washes they come in about 10 different colors so lots of brown colors a dark tone they're acrylic based and um, very similar to sort of games workshop shades um, but more sort of uh, less sort of fantasy colors if that makes sense um more like this one a military shader so for what we do in scale modeling you, you have a better selection of colors in the army painted range than potentially what you would find in the uh the citadel range because citadel is obviously quite vibrant a lot of the time and different color palettes so we just work our way around trying to avoid any of the pouches etc don't worry too much if you go onto the arm or the face because at this stage they're just primed there's no base color on there we'll do that as sort of the last thing really but you can see hopefully how it starts to settle and pull in the sort of creases of the uniform um, and starts to give us this sort of more varied green. Um, from reference pictures, you know, the, the uniforms were very, very green, dark green. Um, and that's what we're trying to, trying to achieve here. To end up like the ones I've already done, which are now on the dio. Uh, and they look okay. At this scale, you don't need to go nuts. I mean, you can, um, but particularly if you're painting a whole army, and this is a, a fairly simple way of painting these things where they're gonna look okay on the table. You can almost stipple it into the smaller spaces, like on his chest there, um, where you've got lots of sort of webbing, the ammunition bandolier, etc. And then work your way round to the back. Just trying not to hit the pouches. As I say, it's not a problem if you do. It just means more work, really, because you've got to go back and wait for this to dry and then sort of repaint the green so if you can avoid it you save yourself time and there we go so that should be dry or dry enough for, for the next stage in about 15 20 minutes so i'll come back there uh, come back once that's dry um, and we'll we'll have a look at it so i'll see you in a minute Okay, so this is, is dry enough now for, for what we need to do for the next stage. So what we're going to do now is focus on all these webbing, all the pouches, the straps, the yoke, um, and the bandolier. 
uh, which is obviously strapped around his chest. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use Citadel uh, Morgast Bone um, and we're going to paint the bandolier. Um, whether that's exactly the right colour that they were, I don't really mind. It, it's more to kind of pick it out from the rest of the webbing um, and then we'll, we'll kind of blend it all together with it again, some washes and stuff. Um, it just differentiates it from the rest and gives a bit of a visual interest to the, to the actual figure itself. So we're using a Citadel small layer brush um, and you just take your time, be careful. It's fairly easy. There's no, again, there's no sort of dark art to it at all. Um, and it, it's just a case of painting that strap. And then once the washes are on, it all kind of ties in together. Blends in and bobs your uncle. Or funnies your aunt, depending. The choice is yours. So as you can see, it just differentiates. It looks on camera, it does look a bit untidy, but to my eye, once the wash is on, you you won't see that really. Um, these figures are quite small, they're 56 scale, so essentially 28 mil. Um, we don't need to go nuts with detail like we perhaps would on a, a Warhammer character for an army or something like that. These are rank and file troops. So there we go, we've picked that out. So we'll clean that brush. The next thing we're going to do. So as we can see on the one I made earlier, we can see there the different shade of green. And you can see the detail, the US on the webbing patches, etc. It's fantastic at this scale. Um, but we want to pick out all those pouches, etc. the same on this one. And it, it's a real easy thing to do. So all we're going to do is get some Citadel Agrax Earthshape. And we're just going to wash it, paint it on top of the, the, the same green as the uniform, but it will change the tone of it. Um, so for that, because we need to be a bit more precise, we're going to use a Citadel layer medium brush. And essentially, all we're going to do is put that on top of the green. Now, the Citadel washes straight from the pot are a little bit thinner than, than the Army Painter. So we, we don't need to be worrying about thinning them or you can thin them, depending on the effect you want using their sort of Lamian medium, which is the, the carrying medium. But we don't need to do that on this. We just want to make sure we pick out all that all that lovely detail because there is a lot of detail. You can see on his on his pouch there, you know, there's a lot of detail there and this just accentuates it in a real simple way. Now on this pouch on the side, what we can see is we have two grenades strapped to it. Um, so we don't want to do those the same as the pouch. So we, we're just going to be a little bit more careful on this one. Um, and just pick out the actual pouch itself. Rather than the, the grenades as well. Because we'll do those in a, in a darker green. So there we go. It's as simple as that. And then again on the straps and on the yoke of his webbing. We'll do the same thing. As we come close to the Morgus Brown, perfect. And then we can go over that as well. Morgus Brown, Morgus Bone, I should say. Um, and then we'll go over that as well with the Agrax Earthshade. And that will blend it in, make it less stark to, um, to the rest of the, the greens, which is what we want to do. We want it to look like it's supposed to be there, but just different. And because they're acrylics, they dry, particularly if you're only using, you know, if you're not flooding the model, 
they dry really quickly. Um, which is why, in my opinion, you know, there's some of the best paints for, for this sort of thing. Um, the only problem, as I said earlier, with Citadel is for scale models and military subjects, the colour palette isn't the best. And that's why we look at things like model colour, uh, AK 3rd Gen, um, Army Painter, and because the, they, they have a better colour range for, for military subjects than, than Citadel do, because it's not Citadel's thing really um, but the majority of this one will be will be done in citadel so you can use them depending on what you're doing there we go so we just work our way around make sure we've kind of covered all the areas we want use a water bottle and there we are so yeah we're getting there we just need to do this strap on his right shoulder it's always worth just taking a minute i find and, and just having a good look around the figure making sure you haven't missed anything at each stage because you don't really if you can avoid it you don't want to be going back um later on to to fix something you've missed just take that little bit extra time and uh, you'll get there there we go that'll do so we'll let that dry and that will be essentially all his webbing done and then we're going to pick out the grenades his weapon system bayonet boots helmet will be last really so obviously in vietnam they had they wore these like camouflage helmet covers which was different to the rest of their um their uniform so we want to try and replicate that and we'll be able to do that with some uh, very simple techniques hopefully so there we go so I'm gonna let that dry completely now and then we'll move on to uh, to the flesh okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on the flesh um, now, at this scale, the same as the MVA, we don't really need to about worry about painting eyes and, and all that stuff. We're, we'll create the impression of eyes with, with shading, really. Um, because at this scale, if you, or certainly, if, some people can do it and they do it really well. But if I do it, it, it looks like a cartoon character. It's ridiculous. So you can see on this one, on his face, we're, we're just creating the impression of eyes, really. Um, and obviously with the lip of the helmet, it's it's in sh natural shade anyway. Um, so that's that's the way we're going to go. So the base colour we're going to use for the flesh is Cadian Flesh Tone from Citadel. Now this is a layer, so it's a little bit thinner than the base green that we used. However, I would still um, put a little bit of water with it and, and just thin it. It just means it's going to flow that much better um, as we as we go around the various areas of flesh. Um, there's not many forearms and face, basically, is what we're, we're doing here. Um, so we'll start on his forearms using a, an Ammo by Meek synthetic brush, uh, number one. Try and keep on camera, which I always struggle with, but we'll do our best. Um, and just again, take your time. There's no rush, is there? No rush. I always find it tricky doing this on camera because normally this would be about two inches away from the tip of my nose. Um, but yeah, with and as you can see, just by adding the water to it, it just allows that paint to flow a bit better. If we need to go back in and do another layer, we can. It just gives us a little bit more control of where that paint ends up um, it's you don't want to be doing this straight from the pot really as I say because the paints a little bit too thick um, and you almost drag in the paint across the model then rather than 
actually painting it, you know, because it's just that little bit too thick. And you, and you lose some of the detail, you know. So you can see there where the black primer is showing through, but that's not an issue because it's quite thin. We can just add a little bit more paint to, to the area where it's a bit dark. And as I say, this is the first first stage doing the flesh. We're not going to go nuts. Um, certainly not like you would on like an eight scale bust or anything like that. Um, with the oil work and everything else because the, there's no need at this scale. In my opinion, as I say, this isn't a tutorial. This is just how I do it or how I did it for for these particular figures. And I'm sure there will be plenty of critique, but that's fine. And there we go. So the forearms are done with the base color for the flesh which just leaves us with the face. So we go right up as best we can to the lip of the helmet underneath his chin. And you will start to see there the difference. A little bit more paint into the, the mix. Just getting a little bit thin as the water reacts with it. But it's, it really is just take your time it's really simple there's no there's no secret to it you know um, it's just time and there we go we've gone around the back of the neck and you can see there where the brush stroke comes across his cheek the difference we can afford to be a little bit darker around the rim of the helmet and underneath his chin etc but that's the base color of the flesh so it looks very action man like currently um, but that will change as we as we progress forward so there's no no issue at all so we'll let that dry and then we'll we'll come in and do some shading on all the flesh um, and then we'll be moving on to a highlight of the flesh and uh, yeah we're pretty much there then so uh, i'll see you in a minute Okay, so we can see that base colour for the flesh has now dried pretty much, or certainly dried to where we need it to be. Obviously, you can see on the pistol grip there, there is a little bit of flesh colour, but that's not a problem because we're going to paint the rifle anyway. Um, so what we need to do now is create some shade on this flesh. So really, really simple way of doing it is we're going to use, again, Citadel Reclam Flesh Shade or Reclam Flesh Shade, depending on how you want to say it. Give that a good shake, get all the pigment flowing around. And then we're gonna go in again with the number one brush from MIG. And this is gonna give it a very pinky, almost sunburnt look. Um, but obviously once the highlights on it, then uh, it won't be an issue. And what it will do is start to bring out all the detail on the hand. Like so. So you can see there we get this kind of sunburnt look, which, are, you know, potentially in Vietnam, they would have been. Um, but that's not, not the look we're going for. But this just gives us that base shade as, as we go through. And then we're going to essentially highlight the flesh once that's dry. Probably more pronounced is we'll see it on the face, um, how it how it works as it settles into all the sort of creases and, and the sort of recessed areas on the, on the face itself. So we can be quite liberal with this because if we go a little bit too much, we can adjust that when we go in with the highlight. So we don't have to be massively careful. Um, we just want to. be able to 
see the detail on the face and already you can see around the eyes around the ears etc the, the mouth we're starting to pick out that detail it does dry kind of shiny but that's not a problem because once we go over the top then that will sort that out so that again is going to take about 15 20 minutes to dry um, and you really need that pretty much completely dry before you go in with the highlight um, so we'll let that dry completely um, but while we're doing that um, what we will do is we'll do these grenades at the back here so as you can see attached to his that looks like an ammo pouch to me um, is these two grenades so we, we want those like a a darker green um than we we've got everywhere else so what we're going to use for that is we're going to use another contrast paint which is militarum green from citadel um and we're just going to use a, a small layer brush and we're just going to get a bit of that on our brush and hopefully what you'll see as we paint those and we'll go right over the grenade pin at the top as well because we're going to come in and do that when we do the weapon and the boots and there we go it's as simple as that so it just gives them a bit of interest and differentiates them from the pouch um, with a bit of shading and contrast which is exactly what it says on the tin it's a contrast paint um, so there we go it's simple as that simple as that and you can see obviously there on the on the butt of the rifle there's a bit of green but it's not a problem because we're going to correct that um, as we go so it's not an issue at all make sure you clean your brush because they're not cheap brushes are they you want to look after them as best you can so there we go we're, we're starting to look a bit more a bit more detailed a bit more interest um, and if we compare that to the finished one we're starting to move in that direction now um, and get a similar similar look so what we're going to do now is we're going to paint the weapon and the boots um, and really simple we're just going to use black um, and then we'll go in and highlight it so we're going to use the Bad and Black by Citadel and we're going to use a small layer brush a little bit of water mixed with it on the palette and so we'll start with the weapon so you want to go over the entire thing really and like I said where so on the butt of the rifle there where we've got that green once we go over with the black, it disappears, which is very cool. And there we go. So we're going to go over the entire rifle. Careful not to go over the flesh that we've already started. Uh, and this is obviously an M16. So all black, really. sort of wooden stock like we did on the the NBA figures with the AKs um, obviously the stock foregrip etc pistol grip on those is generally wood whereas with an M16 it's all kind of black really and then we're going to pick out the, the bayonet or machete depending on what he's got I would imagine a lot of the time there were machetes to cut through the, the jungle terrain. But regardless, we're going to pick that out in black. And then his boots. Um, so he's, he's literally white tacked onto the base at the minute. So just being a bit careful that I don't knock him off. Um, 
and then we just paint the uh, the boots. So this one will probably be used, the next kind of Vietnam thing I'm doing for Rubicon is an M113 with some dismounted infantry, I'll probably use this figure on that base. So what I won't do at the moment is weather kind of his boots and stuff because depending on how the base is, the, the final weathering will tie him into the base uh, on the terrain that he's, he's stood on. Um, so we won't be doing that today. Uh, but if you look on the finished one from the Huey diorama, we have just used some dust effects. Uh, I think it was a shove to bone, it was Andrew Dust. Just lightly dry brushed over his boots and the bottom of his trousers, uh, just to kind of put him in that environment. So that's something we'll do with this one later on, depending where he's going to be stood on the diorama, basically. Um, so that shade on the flesh is pretty much dry now so I'm going to risk it for a biscuit and I'm going to go in and do a highlight um, so this is where really the better quality brush that I can use the, the easier I'm going to find it um, so the color I'm going to use is from Citadel and it's Kislev Flesh which is a layer this is pre-thinned because I only ever use it quite thin um, and using a better quality brush, I'm going to use an Artis Opus Series S uh, Treble Zero for this. Uh, because obviously at this scale, it's it's teeny tiny details that we want to want to be bringing out. So I can take this straight from the pot um, because it is pre-thinned. I've printed it, printed it, thinned it uh, with UMP Ultimate Modeling Products Acrylic Thinner. So I'm fairly happy that it's the right consistency for what I need it to be. And we just go in very gently on the forearm and start to add some highlights. Um, again, more prominent for us to see will be on the, uh, on the face itself. So we'll start with the nose very gently. And the tip of the nose and bridge of the nose and then we'll come across the cheeks chin top of the lip very difficult to do this on camera but we'll we'll try you get the idea anyway and then we'll just pick out tips of the ears etc and then once that's dry, it won't take long at all because it's very thin. It will blend in to the uh, the base color and the shade, uh, but you can see already how it's starting to look. And um, now, unfortunately, on this particular figure, the finger definition on that hand isn't really there particularly well. But that's not a problem because we can sort of. A little bit of careful painting we can paint that in and there we go back of the hand heat brush at a nice point thumb and then the sort of outer of the forearm is where we want it really we can leave it a bit darker as it heads towards the torso because of shade. And that will do us pretty much for his flesh. Um, at the, as I say, at this scale, it, it's more creating that impression. Um, because once he's on a dio base and stuff, it's very, very difficult to see all the little details. So unless you, you're really up close or with a magnifying glass, um, you, you're going to struggle so we're, we're trying to just create the impression really of the flesh that's what we're going for clean your brush because artist opus brushes aren't cheap definitely not so what do we need to do now then so we need to pick out if we look at the finished one so you see on his weapon there we have sort of picked out 
the raised areas of his weapon system, etc. So that's what we're, we're going to do next. And the way we're going to do that is by dry brushing, really. So we're going to use Eschen Grey from Citadel. Um, and we're just going to very gently, with, with minimal, minimal paint on the brush, it's just a dry brush over all the black areas, just to give them, you know, where they're flat black like that, they look very stark. And there is some detail on that weapon. So we want to try and make the most of that. So we'll start with the dark gray. And then very gently, we'll just start to pick out with a dry brush, tip of the barrel, top of the weapon, around the magazine housing, etc., edges of the stock, or the butt rather, I should say. And then around his boots, just around the tips and the toe cups, because obviously they will be a bit more weathered. Um, so his knife, bayonet, shovel, handle, etc. So as I've done that, I think looking at this bit here is a canvas cover for a, a shovel. And this is actually the tip of a combat knife. So what we don't want really is that blending into one so we can use that dry brush in there just to to bring that out um, and that's fine that at this scale as i say that will that will do us just perfectly um yeah so we need some very very subtle tiny metallics um so the way we're going to do that is we're going to use again another Citadel paint iron hand steel and a very small brush. Now, what we're going to pick out here is we're going to pick out the pins of the grenades. And if we can get to it, the tip or the, the top of his water bottle here. So if I point with my brush just here, um, because from everything I've seen, they, they were like a metallic -y, silvery colour in a canvas case. So we can just add that detail in there. And just a tiny touch of paint, really. And it will be the same for the grenades, metallic pins. Um, so if I try and do that on camera. And it doesn't. You know, the detail's not there to do proper grenade pins. This isn't a, a 35th scale resin figure, uh, but we're just giving the impression of the pins, really. And that's all we're doing on that. Super. So, we're pretty much getting there now. So, we need to tackle the helmet. So, if you look at reference pictures of the US Army in Vietnam, most of the time they would have this dark green uniform, but they would have this sort of lighter green um, camouflage helmet cover with a green elastic strap around it that they would stick magazines in, packets of cigarettes, mosquito repellent, all that sort of stuff. Um, so, we just want to give the differentiate it really from um the rest of the uniform because it wasn't the same color in most cases so the way we're going to do that is we're going to use another citadel paint uh i mean yeah death guard green which is a lighter green than um, the base color of the uniform and then very carefully we're going to try and avoid the the green elastic strap around the helmet so we'll go in and we'll try and pick out the rim and what we can do is we can leave sections that are going to be the darker green camouflage color essentially so we can do that very carefully so we start to pick out 
the canvas cover in this in this light green. And as I say, what you want to do really, I found, is is get the lighter green as close as you can to the green elastic strap because otherwise you're going to struggle to see the strap around the helmet. Um, so we're almost using like stippling techniques and then we'll just put some brown on it and we're pretty much there then it gives that final impression that's going to look very similar to that one um, so that's what we're trying to achieve here sometimes easier said than done so for the brown we're going to use again citadel steel legion drab and we're just going to go in and again stipple on almost the um the brown onto the helmet cover and if we take the brown down to where the the elastic band or strap is around the helmet it will help differentiate the helmet strap from the from the cover will certainly give that impression and that will do us we don't we don't need to be very very precise about the camouflage pattern and everything else we're just trying to make it look different to to the rest of the uniform um, so there we go now what we're going to do so on the the helmet here we've got this sort of bit here to me it looks potentially like it's some sort of notebook or whatever it doesn't really matter and then on this side go on camera on this side we've got a magazine so that's already done we don't need to worry about those they're already done um, which ultimately means with the exception of weathering um, the figure is done so we just get a flat coat using vms flat varnish um, and that's how I do them and how I did them for the Huey Dyer. So you can see the two stood next to each other there. Um, obviously this one has had some weathering around the base of his trousers and around his boots to tie him into the base. But that's how I do them. Um, as I say, it's not a tutorial at all. It's just a kind of way I found of painting them. Um, and I thought as part of the series we'd share that um, and it may give someone some ideas some pointers on how to to achieve at this scale something that looks passable really um, as I say I'm not a figure painter so that's pretty much as far as I want to take it you could do so much more if you have the skill and the ability to do it um, but for me that's close enough um, and with everything else that will be on a diorama base, then I'm happy with that. Um, the other US set out at the moment is US Marine Corps. Um, there is a video on the Rubicon YouTube channel of how to paint those. Um, and that's what I followed when I did the Marines. Um, whereas these are US Army, so I did them slightly differently. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Thanks for watching. Uh, one more part left of the Huey Dyer essentially, which is where we're going to look at the whole finished finished thing. Um, that will be up next. Um, and then we'll decide what we're going to do from there on in. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Come and join the Facebook group, Black Rifle Model Works Community Group. All the links are in the video description. And go and check out Rubicon Models um, because they do some fantastic stuff. So uh, until next time, guys, stay safe. Happy hobby. Bye-bye.